Oggi credo che sia uno di quegli appuntamenti che almeno per me passerà un po' alla storia perché è un ospite di cui sono molto orgoglioso per quello che sta facendo e per i contenuti che ci potrà dare e per questo non sono solo oggi dalla parte diciamo della regia ma ho con me il nostro social media manager Gassan Scaini che adesso compare qua a fianco a me ciao, ciao Gassan. a tutti ciao Alessandro ciao. Ivana Todorovic di Autored Up welcome Ivana uh, well, well thank you for having me it's a pleasure it's an honor Abbiamo voluto Ivana perché Ivana è co-founder di Autored App, una estensione di Google Chrome, un'applicazione che eh, aiuta tantissimo chi crea contenuti per LinkedIn, chiunque l'abbia provato in Italia e ovunque nel mondo la sta amando, io la uso e la, la... Non, non siamo partner, non siamo sponsor e there is no any deal among us Ivana, right? No, uh, no, there is no. We are very enthusiastic uh, about it, so we decided to invite you, Ivana. E quindi lascio a Gassan fare le prime domande per conoscere Ivana, il suo background e Autored Up. Hello, Ivana. Uh, hi, Gassan. So, um, let's start uh, maybe knowing something about you. Just tell us uh, something about you. Uh, who's Ivana? Oh, okay. <laughs> so, that's a good question. My background is in economic theory and philosophy of science. Uh, I have a pretty classic education. So I, for example, learned Latin for a quite a few years. <laughs> so that's why I understand, you know, something that you're talking about right now. <laughs> But basically, like, um, I, about uh, two years ago, I started my first startup with my co-founder. Uh, And that startup successfully failed, I, I say it all the time. So that was our first startup that was called Talent Kit. And it was a, it was a, a platform for recruiters. And in the meantime, while we were developing Talent Kit, we started to use LinkedIn. We got to LinkedIn because everyone told us that is the place to be. And that's how I started to use LinkedIn about maybe two years ago. Okay. okay. I go with this translation. Quindi un background, teoria economica, studi classici, anche il latino ha studiato. Nessuno di noi qua, Gassan, lo ha fatto. Eh, prima startup un paio di anni fa, Talent Kit, eh, e come nella migliore letteratura delle startup, la startup è fallita, eh, quindi il primo progetto di startup non è andato a buon fine, ma hanno incominciato lì a usare LinkedIn perché era una piattaforma per recruiter e gli hanno detto dovete essere su LinkedIn, è the place to be, il posto dove essere hanno incominciato a usarlo tre anni fa quindi solo um, so Ivana uh, you said okay you started um, um, on LinkedIn three years ago um, why did you start on LinkedIn and why did you choose uh, LinkedIn then as a platform where you wanted to launch your uh, uh, startup Yeah, so uh, first of all, we started to build this startup uh, without really understanding marketing. My co-founder and I, he's, uh, his background is development. Basically, he's a full-stack developer. And on top of things like economic theory and analysis that I was, I was also working as a manager in startups and in different companies. Also, I was working in compliance. But again, I didn't have marketing or sales experience. So we didn't understand the funnel. We didn't understand like how are you going to get like first users, first beta users, you know, how to approach people. And at some point we talked to a few consultants and they told us, you know, you need to be on LinkedIn because it's a B2B platform. People are starting to create content. LinkedIn is investing more into content creation services, let's call it like that. And that we need to start writing there in order to bring any awareness to our startup. Ok, um, allora ci dice che se lei che il suo co-founder non hanno esperienza di marketing e background nel marketing, il co-founder si occupa di, di sviluppo di codice, un developer, e i propri consulenti durante lo sviluppo di Talent Kit della startup hanno suggerito che avrebbero dovuto creare contenuti su LinkedIn perché ha piattaforma B2B, ma ci sono arrivati senza una consapevolezza di cosa fosse il marketing, il funnel, come creare i contatti, hanno semplicemente incominciato a creare contenuti. But were you on any social media before LinkedIn? Um, I was uh, using, like, I was, I'm still a lurker on Twitter. So I'm just, you know, I have account, but I'm just, you know, scrolling through and reading 
things. Um, I uh, I was using I'm using still Facebook by the way Facebook for you know if you want groups and any kind of a communication like that I still have a Facebook account because there are amazing communities and I am not really into like Instagram TikTok or something like that that is visual because I'm not understanding content through visual content I need to read so basically any platform that has a content that is in text format more or less is my my social platform okay i feel really related with this point uh, ivana uh, <laughs> gassana ha chiesto appunto quali altre piattaforme social utilizza o utilizzava twitter uh, soprattutto per leggere scrollando ancora facebook per le community che si trova e uh, non tanto instagram o tiktok perché e qui appunto mi, mi ci ritrovo eh, ha bisogno di contenuto testuale per, eh, per interagire e Instagram e TikTok ovviamente sono completamente visual based quindi esatto. e intanto scusa questo lo dico in italiano Alessandro eh, se avete altre domande scrivetecele nei commenti così posso tradurle posso fare in tempo a leggerle e tradurle a Ivana So Ivan, I was asking everyone if they had any questions, like just to write them in the comments so that I have yeah, the time to talk. Yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah it will be a pleasure. Yeah. So uh, you were, okay, you started um, uh, using LinkedIn, but what made you uh, think of this uh, instrument? Like what, in, if you're not usually using Facebook or Instagram to program posts, what made you think that there should be an instrument to program posts on, uh, on LinkedIn. LinkedIn. Yeah, so when we started creating content, we really didn't understand what works, what doesn't work. We were reading like blogs, uh, we were getting like tips from everyone, we were calling people to ask what works on LinkedIn. But the issue was you were we were getting like hundreds of ideas, like try this, try that, uh, this topic works, put million hashtags, not hashtags, yes mentions, no links, yes links. So you're all over the place and you don't understand what works. So we started to test basically what works on LinkedIn and that's how we started to optimize our posts. And at some point we realized that we need to get to basics. And one of the, and the basic is for, for us is not about, you know, like uh, anything that is, you know, on a LinkedIn side, but the only thing that we really wanted is to, know how many, how people read your content, you know, like what is important for them, how to, you know, like how to catch attention because we were analyzing other people and I will stop with that. And we were seeing how they are just scrolling through LinkedIn and we were analyzing posts where they stop. So, and why do they stop and what happens after they stop? So we realized that is the first yes that they are getting in the feed. Great. I think that, We are reaching the point. <ride> Il concetto, secondo me, è veramente essenziale, no? Loro hanno incominciato a scrivere, quindi, contenuti su suggerimento dei consulenti, ma non capiva bene cosa funzionava e cosa no. Quindi hanno incominciato a fare ogni tipo di test. Cambiare argomenti, mettere tanti hashtag, non metterli, fare le menzioni. E, mh, hanno capito che serviva loro avere delle basi, no? Qualcosa su cui basarsi. E hanno anche capito, e questa è l'intuizione essenziale, secondo me, che... Eh, l'essenziale, le basi non erano non risiedevano in LinkedIn non erano aspetti tecnici di LinkedIn ma la psicologia delle persone come le persone leggono i post in base a cosa si fermano nello scrollare eh, il newsfeed e quando si fermano cosa fanno a quel punto per leggere il post ecco, quello era l'essenziale che volevano capire e per avere successo con i contenuti Yeah, so uh, I, can, I can jump in with the second part of the story so <ride> What happened then is that we realized that the preview, like the hook is important, like that you really want to get people to click see more. And we started to look for the tools that are enabling that. We didn't plan to build anything for us or something like we were just looking like a few days for tools. And there were only a few, but none of them uh, work properly. So even if you use a tool, it won't look the same in the LinkedIn feed. And the only thing that we really wanted is a tool to preview posts before we publish so we know how it will look in the feed and is it going to catch attention is it easy to scan is it to read is it to engage with we hanno provato diversi tool ma non avevano non trovavano quello che serviva loro quello cosa che dasse che desse loro appunto la possibilità di avere un'anteprima del post capire come sarebbe venuto e quindi come le persone avrebbero potuto interagire con i loro post ok so this gets me 
so like I think it's the the third part of the story you were going to say, Ivana. So you're <laughs> saying it's not only an instrument to program a pot, but there are other features uh, that uh, are crucial or important and that you thought are uh, a need uh, on LinkedIn. So yes. So basically we started, like first we developed this tool. It was not called Outered App. It was not a Chrome extension. It was not, it was just a web app on our server where we were having an option to preview posts. You know, it was very simple, but we gave it to a few people and they really liked the tool and they started using it. So at that moment, we started to add features for ourselves. So we were from the, quite some time, we were building tool for internal tool, like without understanding that that can become a tool for masses, let's call it, or for people that are not us. Ok, all'inizio quindi è nato come uno strumento per loro stesse, addirittura anche il nome non c'era, stava nel loro server, giusto per vedere le anteprime dei post e via via le funzioni che hanno aggiunto erano funzioni che servivano a loro, non lo pensavano come uno strumento per, le, per la diffusione e per le masse. Ed è sempre stato soprattutto, dico anche per Tegasan, uno strumento di formattazione preview e non di schedule, non di programmazione. Esatto, e volevo arrivare a questo punto gradualmente perché magari uno pensa a quello come prima. I said, I was thinking that gradually because uh, as a first impact, maybe someone would think it is for programming a post, but it is not because it's much more. So this is what we loved about it. So what, yes. what is it more and why, why is it important to format uh, and um, how can formatting the post change the results yeah uh well we did like about a month ago we started like we onboarded we onboarded a data scientist that is right now helping us to understand like what posts work and what what, what post doesn't work and one of the very interesting insights is basically we were testing uh how the post looks so how many white spaces it has how many paragraphs does it have bullet points or a number list or not how long is it etc. And we realized that if you have a whole post and you, let's say, you put the text in, in one part, you should have about 40 to 50% of your post when you're just looking at it, like to be white space. So without anything. And that's when the post gets more, the most impressions and views, because that helps people to scan the post and to see what is going on. And then if the post is interesting for them, they will come back and then they will read the post from the beginning. And that's why bold and italic are important, bold, uh, bullet points are important, emojis, etc. This is very important to translate. So Alessandro, now it's your turn. <laughs> sì, quindi eh, analizzando i post che funzionavano, la prima cosa di cui si sono resi conto è quanto era importante appunto la formattazione, in particolare 40 to 50 blank, right? Yeah, yeah, 40 okay. to 50 blank, yeah che ci fosse almeno il 50% di spazio libero nel posto, cioè grazie a, a capo, interline, per intenderci, ci fosse questo spazio, che questo permette alle persone di scorrere velocemente il post e poi tornare con lo sguardo per approfondire. Ed erano proprio questi post quelli che avevano il maggior numero di visualizzazioni e interazioni. Okay. Yeah, so basically that's, that's for the, uh, let's say, how the people read, scan, and evaluate your post at the beginning because the only thing that we really cared and we still care only about that uh, is how many people are going to see your post like unique people and to engage and to you know reshare or whatever should be like to comment etc and regarding the other features when we built and when we realized okay this can be a tool we also realized that it has to be on linkedin like even though it works as a layer on top of linkedin because people don't want to get to other place like to the web application or somewhere to write posts like most people including ourselves we when we had our tool we about 60 70 percent of time so se six or seven posts we didn't using our tool because we would start writing on linkedin and then it was just too complex to copy paste and we were like it's okay it's fine so that's when we realized it has to be an extension and we build the first version of the extension e quindi adesso ci ha raccontato come è nata la prima versione dell'estensione per Chrome 
ehm, ed è nata proprio rendendosi conto che le persone loro stessi quando l'hanno sviluppato per loro non volevano andare su un altro sito aprire un tool diverso avevano bisogno che l'esperienza di ottimizzazione della scrittura fosse integrata dentro a LinkedIn e infatti per chi ha testato Autored Up, è, è un layer che, diciamo, si sovrappone quando si scrive un post e, ed è da lì che hanno capito che dovevano sviluppare un'estensione. Um, aggiungo una cosa in italiano, uh, abbiamo voluto fare questa introduzione perché dobbiamo posizionare, ma adesso andremo a parlare di informazioni di valore, di consigli, anche di dati, perché loro hanno veramente un sacco di dati che possono essere utili a tutti da applicare al di là dell'uso di Autored Up. Noi non siamo qua a promuovere l'uso di Autored Up, ma a capire come grazie a quello possiamo imparare a fare dei buoni post, poi con o senza lo strumento, ma quello che vogliamo dare oggi è informazioni e valore per tutti, ovviamente. Ehm... C'è qualche domanda? Ehm... Prendo una al volo. Um, someone asking an example of a post without visual of yours, Ivana. Mm -hmm. I would suggest them to check your LinkedIn profile and they will see tons yeah. of them. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. So we are testing a few uh, techniques that we realize, like basically, we have, I would say, millions of posts right now that we are doing analysis on. Uh, so, like, whenever we get some insight, we are giving those takes to a few people, including myself, and we are testing that to see whether it will perform good or, or bad, and that's when we start to do, like, more testing on it, before we suggest that to our, to our users. Quindi basta che andate a vedere comunque il suo profilo, per esempio, potete vedere molti esempi di post anche senza visual e comunque ci ricorda che loro analizzano ormai milioni di post per capire, perché hanno dati chiaramente anonimizzati, aggregati di chiunque usi lo strumento e quindi possono vedere cosa funziona e loro lo testano su loro stessi prima di suggerirlo ovviamente attraverso la piattaforma. Prenderei anche quest'altra domanda... E questa altra inglese. domanda potrebbe essere un aggancio anche per eh, una domanda che possiamo fare a Ivana dopo. Allora la teniamo per oh. dopo, ok? Let's keep it for later. No, no, adesso. Va bene. no adesso, ok. <laughs> ok. Uh... Yeah, yeah, Ivana, no, uh, this question is in English. So yeah, okay. it would be a hook, it's a hook for uh, another question I'm going to do later, so... How effective are uh, GIFs yes. and images on LinkedIn in specific? It depends. Basically, it depends, first of all, to define what is effective. <laughs> But um, it depends when you are posting them, especially for GIFs. I will, I will separate these answers, okay? So for GIFs, GIFs are the type of the content that, first of all, if you as a personality like to share that type of the content. And the second point, that when you are sharing a GIF, a GIF you need to think about the status of the mind of the person that is going to see it in the feed. And this is what I think. If, for example, you are sharing a GIF uh, on Saturday morning when people are getting to LinkedIn just to scroll and to see what is nice, you know, they, they don't want to invest too much to, you know, go to the event or click on links, but they see a GIF. That's an amazing because you are, you know, publishing something on Saturday. They didn't take you too much time. And on the other side, you can get some awareness. But GIFs uh, as a type of the uh, attachment are not really getting a significant engagement in a sense where they are not in your funnel. People won't contact you when you are publishing GIFs. You know, you will have that kind of a, of a content that I believe is good from the personal branding perspective, but only limited uh, because you don't want to be seen as a GIF person. So that's about GIFs and then we can go to images. Yeah. Uh, allora, riguardo le GIF animate, appunto è stato chiesto no, quanto possono essere efficaci effettivamente GIF e immagini nei post di LinkedIn, dobbiamo tornare alla psicologia delle persone no? e quindi pensare allo stato mentale in cui sono le persone quando vedrebbero il post, quindi per esempio una GIF leggera sabato mattina ci può stare perché la persona magari non vuole fare grandi approfondimenti e grandi letture, quindi dipende da da chi è la nostra audience, da quando lo vedrà, e, però sempre da usare, così traduco un po' in modo creativo, con moderazione, ecco, mettiamola così. E adesso vediamo invece la risposta riguardo alla immagine, and I would like, I would like to add a part of this question about image or images, because for me, yeah. I'm a big fan of galleries, but let's see your data, what says. 
Yeah, so uh, first of all, again, um, image is really good if it has a meaning, uh, especially if you were on the event, if you want to share some, if you want to share something that is personal, or if you want, for example, right now in the past, let's say a few months, really, really good is when you're sharing your face, like Alessandro had a post, I think today, or where it is shown, like he's showing his face. And it is important because then people can relate to you. That's regarding that. Regarding awareness, um, and we are, if you're talking about number of impressions that you're going to get if you have a post with one image or without, it basically depends on the content. There are, you know, like there are small changes that we see, but I don't think that they are statistically relevant. But from if you're comparing text and image, like you can go with images whenever you feel it is right. And when you really have a really good image that, are, that is sending additional message on top of the text that you're going to write. Allora, ehm, eh, sempre sinteticamente, le immagini sì, se hanno un significato, se aggiungono qualcosa fondamentalmente, quindi vado a un evento, faccio le foto dell'evento, voglio condividere qualcosa di personale e in quei casi mostrare la faccia ha sempre una, un, un significato perché le persone si possono, esatto, si possono eh, connettere con la persona che sta pubblicando, eh, quindi tra andare solo di testo o andare con l'immagine la domanda in mezzo è aggiunge qualcosa e quindi può avere un significato e vorrei aggiungere magari lo traduci tu se vuoi Gassan, per Ivana la cosa che mi piace molto dell'approccio per cui ho voluto questa intervista è che come vedete ehm, quello di cui stiamo parlando è basato su dei dati ma alla fine non viene fuori una ricetta uguale per tutti dobbiamo sempre comunque trovare quello che funziona per noi, per la nostra audience, basandoci su dati e strumenti, che è la cosa bella, ma non c'è una ricetta che può andare bene per tutti e chiunque, fatemi dire, secondo me venda una ricetta che va bene per tutti, forse non sta di cosa par sta parlando. Alessandro was just underlining that this, is, this information that you're giving is um, based on uh, data and statistics, but there is no uh, magic uh, recipe for everyone. So it's based on, um, uh, it has to be personalized, uh, yeah. basically. And, you know, like we have uh, users that are posting only text posts and that are having 20, 30,000 of followers and that their accounts are really growing. And when we are talking about content analytics, they are having like hundreds of reactions only on text or textual posts. On the other side, you have people that are publishing all the time, trying different techniques like they hear that the image is good and they are posting images, videos, carousels, they are trying different things and still they are not growing. Usually the biggest difference is about the message that they are sending and how the, the community and members see them. Because if you are, if, if LinkedIn is your, uh, you know, like online journal where you're writing everything that is on your mind or today you read some interesting book, but that is semi-related to what you do. Tomorrow you will be on some conference that, you know, is not 100% relevant to your audience. Then you are sending different signals and people, when they are analyzing your profile, your content, they don't know what to do with you. They're like, should they follow you? Yes, no. Like, what is the most important message that you are sending? Sì, e, loro vedono appunto persone che fanno solo magari post di solo testo e hanno una audience crescente, ampia, ottengono tanto engagement, persone invece al contrario che non lo ottengono, vedono persone che hanno magari dei contenuti che vanno in troppe direzioni, no? quindi un giorno è il convegno, un giorno è un altro eh, contenuto completamente diverso e questo alla fine non funziona perché le persone quando vedono il post, vedono il profilo, non sanno cosa farsene della relazione che potrebbero costruire con la persona quindi c'è veramente da, da costruire una strategia e poi con i dati si può analizzare ovviamente cosa funziona e maybe un piccolo cambio di programma ma magari possiamo a questo punto parlare un attimo di analytics che è una funzione molto interessante di autore d'app quindi magari saltiamo quel punto lì se sei d'accordo sì sì eh, volevo solo sottolineare appunto che diceva Ivana eh, che, appunto, eh, che magari qualcuno sente un giorno che una cosa va, allora la usa, poi sente che il giorno dopo che un'altra cosa va e la usa, quindi crea un casino su, proprio su, che solo chi condivide solo testo, però in modo costante trasmette il messaggio ottiene anche risultati grandi. So Ivana, we 
um, could pass now to the argument of uh, analytics, as Alessandra said. Yeah. Uh, can we can we just like I have one hint for the community that I tested like a few days ago and like if you're asking me if, so what's what works right now if you want to get like a ton of impressions okay if that is what you aim for first of all you need to start creating content like you cannot do this strategy if you have zero content creation on your profile if it is not optimized etc but if you get to the stage where you're getting some traction right now the only hack that I know that works is what we call a shareable content. So what you really want to do is you want to create type of the content. It can be a carousel or it can be a cheat sheet or it can be, you know, something like a PDF that has a ton of value that you want that is so much valuable to the community that they will reshare or repost your content. So that is going to get you amazing results. Like personally, I did it last week. I got like 10% more followers. So like about 800 more people started to follow me because of that type of content. I got 30 reshares or who knows how many, 500 reactions. So if you really want to hack the system right now, and I know that this will work only for quite some time, so maybe a few months, do create a shareable content with a ton of value. Spend 10 hours, 20 hours on it. And I'm pretty sure that you're going to get to the next level only in LinkedIn. So that's the carousel, a PDF, or what else? Or a cheat sheet, like an image that is basically having a ton yes. of information. Yeah. Like infographics or... Infographics, something. yes. But really, right. really specific in a sense where you need to have so many information. Like we can maybe link my post or someone else's post that... We know it works. Ok. Allora, ci dice, se volete un, uh, una, qualcosa che veramente oggi funziona, se volete tonnellate di impression, ammesso che questo sia il suo obiettivo, giustamente, e questa cosa funziona se già avete un po' di visibilità, quindi state già pubblicando e qualcosa incomincia a funzionare, di fare un contenuto eh, che possa avere tantissimo valore. Lei ha detto, spendete anche 10 o 20 ore per produrlo. Quindi vedete che non è una scorciatoia, è una cosa che funziona, ma non è il trucchettino facile per vincere. Eh, quindi con tanto valore, per esempio, un carosello, quindi col PDF sfogliabile, o magari anche tipo infografica, cheat sheet, quindi dove in un'immagine si riassumono qualcosa di molto complesso che in colpo d'occhio si possa vedere deve essere un qualcosa che le persone vogliono condividere perché c'è tanto valore utile per loro e grazie a quello con le condivisioni ci sarà una grande crescita per esempio lei ci citava un caso in cui in una settimana ha avuto 800 follower in più il 10% dei suoi follower grazie a un contenuto di questo tipo quindi è una cosa che in questo momento sta funzionando tanto esatto uh, un esempio anche specifico sulla pagina di Autodap hanno condiviso una eh, cheat sheet eh, per l'employee advocacy. Io stesso l'ho salvata perché l'ho ritenuta molto utile. Ivan, I was just underlining that uh, as you just said, I saved uh, a couple of days ago the employee uh, advocacy chat sheet. So yes. it's something that has to be valuable that people want to share or to save for themselves. Yeah. Mm. Dali. Dali la ci ricorda la coerenza esatto, cioè comunque abbiamo un posizionamento vogliamo parlare certe cose e produrremo un contenuto che sia in linea con quello quindi non inseguiamo ogni giorno il trucco del, del giorno ok, allora, back to the analytics okay, pass, uh, I would pass to the analytics time so I'm curious about one point maybe we can get to back to it so it's uh, the hook so maybe uh -huh. we can get back to that later okay. but let's yeah. talk about the analytics uh, a bit because uh, Uh, I think they're interested to know more about the information. Yeah, so regarding analytics, so what we, like, what is, first of all, just to explain what is the positioning of Outward App as a company. So one of the things that we are very concerned is getting banned from LinkedIn. Like, that's something that we really, like, we heard, like, horror stories about it. And you can get, like, it doesn't have to be a direct ban, but you get the notification that you're using some extensions or that you're auto that are automating some activity. By the way, that definitely doesn't need to be because of the extensions. It can also be because you are maybe opening too many profiles, you know, like right-click open profile, or you're sending too many missed messages, even if they are totally personalized. So if, if you are not using any tools, etc. But something that's one thing that we were always thinking as a tool 
how to position ourselves. So we realized that we don't want to take some, anyone's cookie and that we want, don't want to have the option to automate activity, let's call it like that. And so we spent like, why I'm talking about it, because we spent like uh, months to develop a way to collect or to, the better word is to mirror your content analytics to outer up. So what does it mean? That means that you can download outer up extension. You go to your posts. We have a link in outer up and then you scroll down. While you're scrolling down, we are mirroring all data about all your posts personal post that you ever published. So if you scroll to 100 posts or 200, 300, as many as you have, and then we collect that together into a database where you can see all those statistics and the posts and that you can, with one click, reuse them, put them in, into the editor. That's what we are building, what we built. And right now we are building an analytics with graphs, etc. cetera. Okay. Um... Allora, eh, stiamo parlando un po' di analisi per eh, aprire questo tema di quanto è importante l'analisi. Eh, all- ci ha dato una spiegazione anche su come hanno voluto sviluppare l'estensione. Non hanno mai voluto gestire eh, cookie, non hanno mai voluto fare attività automatiche e nulla che potesse creare dei problemi di sicurezza per gli utenti lato ban di LinkedIn. Il ban poi può arrivare anche per azioni manuali fatte senza nessuna estensione, ma loro volevano evitare ogni possibile rischio provocato eh, da, dallo sviluppo di Autored App e hanno trovato un modo con mesi di lavoro per ehm, raccogliere, diciamo, non so come tradurlo, rispecchiare in qualche modo no, i dati. Quindi quando si, si scrollano i propri post attraverso Autored App è possibile ehm, rivedere in una forma grafica diversa e stanno lavorandoci, diceva appunto, anche dei grafici, per ora è più una tabella tipo file Excel, i dati dei post per poterli analizzare e lo dico ora appunto in italiano e poi lei ci, ci spiegherà insomma ma eh, secondo me la cosa migliore che loro hanno fatto ve lo potreste fare anche voi manualmente io lo suggerisco sempre nei miei training è aggiungere una colonna immaginaria che LinkedIn non dà che è la percentuale di interesse interest rate eh, come la divisione tra le interazioni ottenute i click purtroppo non ci sono per i profili personali quindi le interazioni e le impression perché quello è il dato che permette di comparare due post, uno che ha fatto magari 100 impression e uno che ne ha fatte 1000 o 10.000. So Ivana, uh, you understood, no? I really appreciate that you added the interest rate column because I think that that is the point that is crucial um, beyond the number of impressions or interaction to have that ratio. Yeah, thank you. Yes, and right now we are building these graphs uh, that will be available, I hope, in a week or two to all Outered Up users where like probably the most advanced content analytics that you ever saw. Um, we are even thinking to put it like to be less complex as right now it's really like you can do anything that you want and to see whatever you want. <laughs> But the, the whole idea is basically to give you um, a tool uh, because at, at the end, Outer App is a tool to understand what works for you, what doesn't work for you, and then to do more of these things that work and less of these that, that doesn't work. E quindi in un paio di settimane massimo dovrebbero arrivare i grafici, il loro obiettivo è far dare uno strumento affinché le persone capiscano cosa funziona per sé e cosa no, e quindi appunto per quella la percentuale di interesse e ripeto per chi non la conosce quindi la proporzione tra le interazioni e le impression e questo permette di paragonare post diversi. Let's hope that will not be too expensive when you will charge with all these features, I'm afraid. <laughs> no, it won't be. Like, it will be <laughs> cheaper than you expect. Like, for beta, yeah, for beta users only. Okay. Like, after that, we are going to, to increase the price, you know, based <laughs> on the sense. value. But for <laughs> beta users, it will be relatively cheap. Forgive me for the joke, but... No, you... no, uh, they are asking us all the time about pricing. <laughs> and I'm like, I really, really believe that it will be okay for everyone including for us in Serbia that you know like where the salaries are not that high as in the in the western Europe or yeah. US yeah no solo fa scherzato un po' dicendo speriamo che non sia troppo costoso quando diventerà pagamento con tutte queste funzioni esclusive ma ha detto che ce lo potremo permettere insomma anche noi che diciamo magari abbiamo st- probabilmente stipendi nella media più alti della Serbia non sono così convinto oggigiorno ma forse uh, there is a question about the hooks Gassan I don't know if you want to go with that yeah, yeah. aspetta uh, che lo introduco in italiano 
allora ehm, sì. eh, facciamo una domanda sugli hooks quindi le prime tre righe del post per intenderci perché Autore ha una funzione per suggerire degli agganci ecco chiamiamoli agganci in italiano eh, molto dettagliati sono al momento in inglese ma servono per ispirazione uno poi se li usa nella propria lingua io la, la domanda che ho fatto a Ivana quando abbiamo chiacchierato che adesso gli poniamo è Qual è il discrimine tra uh, essere dei game changer, qualcosa che veramente aiuta le persone e portare quasi al clickbait, no? quindi quasi all'apertura un po' troppo furba in, in qualche modo, perché è un tema importante, sono utili, ma dove dobbiamo fermarci a utilizzarli? I think uh, Ivan already is understanding some Italian. Yeah. So, <laughs> Alessandro was talking about something about this argument with which is very interesting for everyone, like the hook or the clickbait. Is it a game changer or is it something that's a bit um, like um, hot uh, as an argument to touch? Uh, I see just one thing I want to use this uh, even to talk about uh, how you, uh, with, the, with, the, with this tool, you seem to suggest a lot uh, what really works and what functions better. It's not only about uh, formatting, it's like even in, in the tool, uh, you give suggestions. So tell us more about yeah. it. Yeah, uh, and we really, right now we are uh, building the Authored Up Academy. Uh, at the beginning it will be in English, but we are going to, to probably to translate to different languages. To be honest for us is about the number of users that we have that are speaking specific language. That's why we have hooks in English and in German, because most of the people are coming from uh, Dach region, so uh, Germany, Switzerland, and Austria. But hopefully, if we get like enough users from Italy, we're definitely going to translate everything in Italian. Um, so regarding the hooks, um, we built that feature for templates, like templates for hooks and templates also for endings, because people don't know how to start it post how to catch attention and also they don't know how to end they get somewhere they are like we are almost here but what should they write at the end and we saw that those are the two main moments when people stop writing and then choose to do something else <laughs> so like first of all is starting itself understanding how to start and the second point is not having clue how to finish and then you know deciding to to just close altered up or close linkedin and not to publish anything so regarding hooks yes they can be very clickbaity let's call it like that and mm -hmm. i personally i don't like that type of hooks um it's about personality Salespeople love it and i know that for some it is going pretty good but the the type of hooks that we developed are we have also those promotional hooks because we are using tags You, you, you have like hard sell hooks. So it's like you really want to sell in the hook. However, you have like myths or mistakes or educational hooks where they're more about, you know, like they're not that clickbaity. And at the end, the whole idea about our templates is not that you're going to, you know, plain text post use, you know, like put it in and without modification, most of our users, like 70, 80% are never putting a hook that they see on the sidebar. However, they are using that as inspiration to create something on their own. Allora, provo a riassumere. Um, hanno creato questi, questi inizi proprio perché è molto importante attirare l'attenzione, l'abbiamo detto all'inizio nello scroll, e l'altra parte su cui forniscono dei template è la parte anche di chiusura, perché è un altro dei punti dove alcune volte le persone, non sapendo cosa fare, chiudono tutto, magari anche LinkedIn, e vanno a fare altro. Il modo in cui andrebbero intesi questi, questi principi, queste aperture, anche le chiusure, è più come un template, un'ispirazione. In effetti dice che più del 70% di quelli che attualmente lo usano sulla piattaforma non lo pubblicano così com'è, ma appunto lo rielaborano e lo usano proprio come ispirazione e lei stessa appunto sconsiglia di usarli così puri come sono scritti e a proposito di questi consigli e di come andrebbero usati eh, stanno realizzando una you call it academy, right? Yes, uh, yes. yes. una sorta di academy un up academy che è fondamentalmente open knowledge quindi conoscenza su come quali sono le cose che funzionano di più sarà scritto inizialmente in inglese e in tedesco perché Autoredup va fortissimo nell'area di lingua tedesca ma se tanti italiani lo richiederanno e lo leggeranno ci sarà la traduzione in italiano quindi messaggio per tutti 
eh, leggetelo e chiedetelo così l'avremo anche in italiano c'è una domanda in inglese he said it in Italian but I'm going to say, to say it in English he's asked to ask for it in Italian so probably you'll have to do it in Italian too. <laughs> so, uh, quindi Marta chiede qual è il domanda. momento migliore di pubblicare per avere eh, la maggiore reach della propria audience is there any magical recipe Ivana for this? Uh, uh... Yes, <laughs> so, uh, but it's not that simple. So um, one of the first projects that we did, like uh, data analyst projects, like data analytics, is that we analyze the best time to post. But to have best time to post, you cannot, like whatever you read, you know, usually is not true, um, to be honest, because they are taking all the data from, you know, from US, from <clears throat> Australia, from Italy, and they're combining that and telling you like, post on Tuesday at 1 p.m. <laughs> But that doesn't really, you know, like how can it be, uh, you know, like that wide and, you know, how it can work for anyone. So what we, I can tell you for me and I can tell you what we are building. So we uh, did a clustering of profiles because you have people that all just started to create content on LinkedIn. You have influencers, you have, you know, like big accounts like Bill Gates, whenever Bill Gates publishes, you know, it's the best time for him, you know, because it doesn't really matter. So uh, for European time uh, zone, so uh, uh, is basically you need to, you, you have three, usually three times per day. First time is before people get to the job, because if in Italy, for example, people are starting to work at eight, you will publish at 7.15, 7.30, 7 or 8. So the whole idea is, You need to think about how people read and spend time on LinkedIn. They get their phone and when they get to, to the job, they see what is going on and they are like, okay, maybe they will engage. The second time is about lunchtime because again, they have a few minutes to spend on LinkedIn. And after that, you have one time about between like 7 and 8 p.m. And that is usually the content that will be seen or late night or tomorrow morning. But if you're targeting like really good times, I would say one hour before people are usually starting to work and about lunchtime, but at the, at the beginning of the lunchtime, not at the end, because you need like 30 minutes to an hour for the algorithm to accept your content, to see that it is relevant and to start spreading to more people. So about for one hour, they are testing the content and just putting it to a few people to see what will be the reaction. Allora, ehm, sì, esiste la ricetta magica per pubblicare i contenuti nell'orario migliore, eh, tutte le ricerche che si leggono, io ho fatto proprio un post pochi giorni fa mettendo insieme tutte queste ricerche che si trovano di HubSpot, di Sprout Social e di qualunque altra, sono molto generaliste, molto americocentriche, è una volta la divan armor based on the company pages and personal profiles, yeah. most of the time, of sono più basate sulle pagine aziendali che non sui profili, Um, e loro hanno dei dati in base a questi dati ci sono tre orari che ci consiglia poi dice giustamente dipende anche chi sei se sei Bill Gates puoi pubblicare a qualunque ora che ovviamente funzionerà però per noi che non siamo ancora Bill Gates le tre fasce orarie e mi ci ritrovo moltissimo eh, lo predico da dieci anni sono prima di iniziare il lavoro quindi qual, non so, 15, 20, 30 minuti prima che le persone inizino a lavorare, per esempio poco prima delle 8, l'ora di pranzo, ma all'inizio dell'ora di pranzo, considerando sempre che l'algoritmo ha bisogno di una trentina di minuti per fare i primi test, mostrare il post a qualcuno e capire se il post ha valore, quindi puoi spingerlo nei feed, oppure verso sera, 7, 8 di sera, che saranno i post per eh, The Night Owls, per quelli che guardano LinkedIn più in notturna, eh, prima di addormentarsi, al posto di Netflix, oppure che verrà visto magari alla mattina presto, successivamente, da chi utilizza anche presto la mattina. Quindi queste sono le tre fasce orarie che nell'esperienza di autore d'app di Vana, e io sottoscrivo al 100%, funzionano di più. Uh, one more point. Um, so we are right now, we built like 48 different, uh, so we built different clusters. So each profile that is in autore d'app is right now, has its own name and it, it is in a cluster with people that are behaving similar to that profile on LinkedIn. And um, we have 48 different, different uh, let's see, those uh, uh, um, best times to post, but still we are testing that. Um, and we hope to have that feature like in two to three months when 
we had more data and understand that. And two more times that work uh, is Saturday, uh, not morning, but let's say 9, 10, because people that are spending, you know, some work time on Saturday, usually they are about 11, 12. So again, the whole idea, and that's about gifts. That's when gifts are basically working the best. And one time, and then nothing, and then Sunday evening, really, really evening, 9, 10 a.m. And that is usually the content that will be seen on Monday morning. 9, 10 p.m. 10 p.m., yeah. yeah. Yes. Early, early night, yeah. Uh, oh, sorry, late night. Late night, ok. Yeah. Quindi, allora, altre due aree che possono funzionare bene sono il sabato mattina, magari 9-10 del mattino, argomenti un po' più leggeri, tipo le GIF che dicevamo prima, oppure sabato sera più tardi, domenica sera più tardi, 9-10 di sera, eh, ma stanno realizzando uh, 48 clusters. Yeah, right? 48, yeah. 48 40... different clusters, yeah. Sì, hanno praticamente raggruppato gli utenti in base ai loro comportamenti in 48 diversi cluster che permetterà anche loro di analizzare meglio quali sono le diverse fasce orarie migliori sulla base di questi cluster. I imagine your analysis are uh, based on all the users, not per country, right? Because someone is asking on how many Italians are you testing? Yeah, uh, we are also adding that, like we are adding location as part of the clustering. So yes, if you are, we are taking not only the time zone, but also the location and the language that you are using to write, because it depends if you're writing in Italian, then you are targeting obviously Italy as a main country. So one cluster is that, and we are analyzing, that's why we need to have as much content from you as possible, because then we can easily cluster you and put you where, where you should fit and then provide you the additional advice is not only what is the best time to post, but then we can suggest maybe a type of the, of the post that you can write, or we can suggest, uh, um, for example, to, to uh, create more content or less content. And we have so many things that we can suggest you. Uh, but yeah, based on these clusters. But yes, we are taking that into account. Mm. Sì, brevemente, considera anche la località, ecco, nei cluster che stanno facendo. I don't know if you want, you want to disclose how many... Italian users are you yes. have now on the platform or about it? 500 about 500 people okay. in from Italy writing in Italian allora prima di questa live circa 500 utenti italiani <laughs> vediamo dopo la live questo per rispondere Before alla domanda line, so after this live we'll see how much they yeah, how it will go. yeah hopefully way more yeah we need about so, 1000 to have like a statistically good model so you know, help us help us help you Great. Exactly. Well, this is what I was going to say, is that uh, I said in Italian, Alessandro, praticamente, eh, Ivana sta dicendo che comunque imparano anche dalle informazioni che gli diamo, quindi pubblicando i nostri post, e loro migliorano il risultato anche in base a quello. So, they, our posts give you information which help you give a better service uh, to us. Yeah. It's, this reminds me of, uh, of AI, like, uh, you are learning from what you are uh, collecting. So since we are touching this point, um, will you feature AI in uh, Authored App? And uh, how do you see, how will you see uh, Authored App in the future? Yeah, so we uh, started to play, I would say play, like to test uh, how to uh, make some enablement of AI into Authored App like more than a year ago. Like, yeah, basically when we started. And before ChatGPT, uh, we even wanted to fine tune a model here, like we were thinking about buying hardware. So, but the problem uh, was that the, first of all, the, uh, the, the whole market is expanding so, so fast and that you cannot really cope as a small tool with ChatGPT. There are numerous tools that are helping you to create LinkedIn content and that they are worse than ChatGPT. And we also don't think that ChatGPT is good. <laughs> so, you know, we don't think that AI is there. And we don't think that the idea of creating LinkedIn content should be for any AI language model to give you what to write or to give you a draft post. But it is more about getting information from you, like those insights that people really want to read and, you know, like specific knowledge that you have to write. So we are playing a bit with, with uh, uh, a few ideas, but I don't think that we'll be close to it in the next few few months uh, before we do a real release, like start charging and then 
move, move further. Mm. Um, allora, mh, hanno incominciato a fare dei test, a sperimentare, a vedere, anche perché è un trend importante, ma mh, sono un pochettino scettici sul fatto che possa essere un'intelligenza artificiale, cioè GPT, per esempio, a scrivere dei contenuti per LinkedIn. Io sono abbastanza d'accordo, tra l'altro, e quindi nei prossimi, fino ai prossimi mesi non si vedrà qualcosa, ma sarà un qualcosa più in linea con l'approccio che abbiamo visto, di essere a servizio di chi crea e non semplicemente che crei. Let's start like in, in two minutes sum up how easy it, it, it is to use author app, what people can get um, uh, to, have, to give the most of their post, uh, to sum up what, uh, what works most. Um, the one thing that you, um, if you have a content strategy or if you, at least you have an understanding of your target audience, you are probably better than 85-90% of people that are creating content on LinkedIn. So I think that's one thing that you should have without Altered Up. And when you, uh, uh, with the Altered Up, the whole idea is when you already have an idea about your audience, you have the idea for topics, then you can get the most out of your text or out of your LinkedIn post. And you will do so by adding formatting and previewing the post. That is probably the, the easiest feature to, to start with. You can see hooks and endings templates. You can, for example, save snippets for those uh, nice CTAs that, by the way, work on LinkedIn. So follow even at Todorovic for more content about LinkedIn. Um, uh, uh, LinkedIn employee advocacy, like people are clicking on your profile, going to your profile, checking it. So that you can save that and then reuse all the time. And uh, one thing that really works good is we all spend a lot of time on LinkedIn. When I say a lot, I mean like even 15 minutes per day scrolling through LinkedIn. You get an idea for the, for the post. You can easily open an altered app and create that as a draft, as a you know, idea for, for the post. And the last thing is about collecting all your analytics. And in, in, in a week when we re hopefully release the graphs, you can also not only have that in, in the format of the table, but you can see really, really nice charts that you can play with and see differences between your posts, analyze them, because at the end, it's about uh, personalization. That's about outer love. Ok, vediamo se riesco a riassumere anche perché mi stavo distraendo leggendo i commenti. Uh, comunque, partendo dal, dall'idea di essere già comunque su LinkedIn, di conoscere la propria audience e sapere cosa l'audience ha, ha bisogno, eh, diciamo il flusso di lavoro suggerito è quello di entrare su LinkedIn, spendere dei primi minuti per trovare un'idea, aprire autore d'app e incominciare a costruire il post utilizzando appunto gli strumenti di formattazione e per esempio utilizzando gli snippet, non li abbiamo nominati prima, sono un modo, io li amo alla follia, sono un modo rapido per inserire eh, dei pezzi di testo che usiamo e riusiamo più volte nei post, tipo la call to action finale per essere seguiti, eccetera, e poi analizzare cosa ha funzionato, perché, e questa forse è la chiusura migliore che si possa fare, e tutto ruota intorno alla personalizzazione e quello che funziona per ciascuno io avrei tipo un milione di domande probabilmente ancora e spero che ci siano delle occasioni per farle a Ivano per trovare le risposte a queste domande che ho in mente nell'academy che verrà rilasciata prossimamente perché ci sono tante cose di cui si potrebbe parlare thank you so much Ivana thank you for the time because it, it has been one hour and also you know uh, lo dico I, I'm talent for the other, we also met before, no? ci siamo incontrati yeah. prima per programmare, quindi Ivana ha dedicato un sacco di tempo. Thank you so much, I'm very, very grateful for uh, your, the knowledge you share with us. Yes, thank, thank you, you Alessandro, thank you, Gassan. <laughs> and thank you for everyone who is commenting and, uh, and sending us questions. You can have more information, uh, maybe uh, another time. Of this course, yeah, right. call me. You know, I, I'll be happy to jump in on a call like this. <laughs> Thank you. See you. Ciao a tutti, grazie. See you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Oh.